Well, the ecumenical call for just peace, which was moved through a process in Jamaica and it was supported by the Central Committee of the World Council of Churches has been of keen interest to the Church of the Brethren as a historic peace church. Mm -hmm. Within the document, it really purports that Christianity reconsider its um, uh, support of just war theory to move to just peace. It's a huge shift. Um, how, um, how does the document influence this assembly that will help the assembly itself and its member churches make the shift uh, towards a sustainable, just peace? How will it affect the assembly itself? And, and most importantly, do you think that the Christian communions that are participants of the WCC are really ready to assume this role as reconcilers and peacemakers? Yes, and if, if I didn't believe that, I don't think we should have the assembly. Uh, that's why we have it. That uh, we should renew our common commitment to be what Christ calls us to be. It's not only for you and your, mm -hmm. your peace churches to, to read Christ's word about the peacemakers. Uh, it, it's, it's a word for, to all of us. But you have been able to emphasize this and also to to make it clear how this is a genuine part of being a Christian disciple. And I think that is something new that is, at least something that is coming stronger than before, as a common commitment. <coughs> I can't imagine any church as a member church of the World Council Churches who would say it is not our agenda to be involved in peace or just peace. Um, I know that there are different discussions within the churches about mm. what that means. But I would say even, even that has developed towards, towards a more common understanding of how we as Christians both can work to prevent conflict and to build, as I said, peace from below. Uh, and to, to claim that we as Christians are for peace and not, not here to legitimize war. I think there, there, there is a shift here, as you say, uh, from, from focusing uh, on uh, what can be the criteria, acceptable criteria for war. I mean, uh, that will be a discussion in the world, sure. uh, as long as there, there are military uh, institutions and, and, and conflicts uh, uh, where military is involved. But there is a shift where it's, we are focusing much more how do we, how do we contribute to peace and a just peace. Uh, and I think that document, as you referred to from Jamaica, is one sign of a process. I think another sign of this process is that the Central Committee made this decision about the theme for the Assembly. And a third sign is that the Central Committee, as it met last year, said that when we plan for the future programs of the World Council of Churches, we should make sure that we find a way to develop a pilgrimage for justice and peace. Which means that we, we, we link our work for justice and peace to our spirituality and to our willingness to move together and to move into new areas and new fields. Sometimes it's, it's where we are, sometimes it's other places. But we are willing to, to make this search and prayer for peace something that is at the heart of being church. And I think uh, your church and other churches have really contributed to this development. Uh, that's also why it's so significant for us that you are an active member of the World Council of Churches and continue to, to raise this agenda. I know my own church, the Church of Norway, and I know that this influence from the ecumenical movement has changed a lot of how we think and how we <coughs> act and how we speak about this as one of the crucial elements of being church. I really hope that the, the assembly, both in a formal way, but also in, 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 in its many dimensions of, of being an assembly in, in our prayers, in our Bible studies, in our deliberations, in our uh, talking together about many issues, see that this search for just peace is, is a bloodstream following what we are here for.
and also giving directions to what we shall be doing after this assembly.